All right, so today I <clears throat> figured I'd address some of the, the pump work I've done and uh, kind of walk you through what I've used and what I figured out to be kind of the best method for getting it done. So <clears throat> the pump, first of all, it's going to come out of the jet ski. It's going to look like this all assembled and uh, it's going to be siliconed, still has a little bit on it. I have cleaned most of it off, but it is going to be siliconed together. So what I what I found to be the best way is take a rubber mallet like this and just like you want to like kind of give it an angle and you want to just beat the like just hit the uh, different sections of the pump until it actually comes loose and like be, you know it comes apart. So it will seem like it's not going to come apart, but just keep on hitting it and it will eventually come apart. So uh, right here would be the steering nozzle that is off and then then you can go ahead and disassemble it so I always start with the front here and so one issue that I had with this one as you can see it's broken so I uh, that unfortunately happened so I hit it with a rubber mallet and uh, the I mean it's brittle so it just kinda of broke off so that's kind of a bummer but anyways so that was the, the one that came off of this pump and there it is so that, that comes off fairly easily. Your best bet is probably hitting it up here a little bit and uh, trying to avoid hitting it <clears throat> on these ends here. So that's probably the best course with that. I do have another one here that's actually bored that I'll talk about in a second. And so then once that's done, this I, I didn't break any of these yet. So I mean, these seem to be pretty robust and uh, can take a hit. So once that comes apart, I, I hit it like I hit it on anywhere pretty much. I hit it going that way, hit it down, back and forth, and just break them free. They do have locating pins in them. But this one has uh, one locating pin, and the steering nozzle or the uh, exit nozzle also has one locating pin in it. <clears throat> so once that's done, you can go ahead and uh, this used to have a stock impeller in it. I put a different impeller into it but I, I left it loose so with the uh, with the impeller this is at, this is the stock impeller next to the uh, the aftermarket impeller this is scat 15 and uh, that's a that's a lower pitch than this one I believe stock is 17.5 but not sure but so the more you the more you drop in the number the more low end and uh, you lose a little bit of top end but that's why we have it apart and hopefully going to make up the difference with some upgrades. So, uh, Before we talk about that though, this is the uh, this is like the little uh, cone kind of that protects the Zerk fitting in here. And it is a soft plastic so I uh, you got to open it up to grease it every once in a while. And uh, it is important not to over grease it or else you can blow out your rear seal. <clears throat> so just you know be conscientious when doing that but you don't want it to, uh, well don't want to let it get too dry either so issue was is that I put my uh, it used to be uh, uh, Allen head but rounded it out so I ground two flats in it I do have a replacement one but anywho so that just screws out and uh, you can get to your zerk fitting that's behind there grease your pump so anyways after that <clears throat> so just be careful. Be careful not to over tighten that or else it will cause trouble. So once I uh, so once the impeller's on, there are shims behind the impeller, which I will show you now. Alright, so you just unscrew the impeller. If once when the impeller's new, or uh not not new, but uh, when the impeller hasn't been taken off yet and it's still torqued down, you're going to want one of these tools. This is just an impeller removal tool. And uh, I got this off of Watercraft Works. And uh, so that just kind of goes into the spline here. And that just holds that. And then you can, there is a hex on, on the impeller itself. And uh, I find the best way is to put this end into a vise so that it's sitting like upright like this and then you use your uh, you use your wrench to get the impeller off so that's what I found to be the best method for myself 
and you can really get a lot of a uh, lot of leverage that way and hopefully get it off so then you just unscrew this impeller oh wrong way these are also uh left hand threads or whatever reverse threads so they come off like that impeller and then behind the impeller you have these shims now you want to use uh, as many shims as you possibly can and get it as close to uh, the wear ring as possible so that you don't get any uh, you get like as much power as possible out of the pump so this pump I also did go through and uh, blueprint it I mean it isn't perfect but I think it was a pretty good job for uh, my first time blueprinting a pump here so I mean <clears throat> you can't see it anymore but like all in here were casting marks big casting marks on the outside it's all been taken down so the tool I used to do all that work was uh, this Dremel this Dremel with uh, with this attachment on it the, a little bit more of a skinny attachment this, has, this is the cutting wheel I didn't use that I used these drums sanding drums of different sizes and uh, <clears throat> I did go through all of my Dremel brand drums so I bought uh, kind of like a value pack online that wasn't Dremel brand and just do yourself a favor spend the extra spend your extra money on the uh, Dremel brand because these ones just didn't hold up well they're cheaper and uh, the Dremel brands well worth the uh, the quality of the product and you know you don't burn through them as quick and so just get the Dremel brand but that's what I used pretty simple there so once that's all blueprinted on both sides and your uh, and your shims are on so then once your shims are on however many you uh, think you need. You might have to try it a couple times. I started with three. It had some uh, play in it. So I added a fourth and it seems like that's kind of the good number for it because it seems like it's extremely close. Extremely close to the wearing. So then that's going to just press it on like that and then you can test fit your impeller. You spin it. If it, <clears throat> if it rubs you really want to make sure it's seated in there good and if it is and it's still rubbing then pull out a shim test it again and uh, just kind of go like that so that's like all the pump work I did and uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is all ready to go I just have to torque this thing back down and then I also have a new uh, turning nozzle coming that is from Pro Watercraft Racing and it's uh, it's made of a different material. It's a little bit longer, and it's supposed to increase uh, your RPM a little bit, give you a little bit of a better turning feel, and it looks a lot cooler than the stock one. So we got that thing coming, and the uh, one more thing, just to look at the board nozzle. <clears throat> this is also a board no This is a board nozzle here, as you can see the diameter difference. And that's my uh, stock one that is not bored. You have a lot of extra material there. And uh, <clears throat> uh, they say that boring it, it gives you a little bit more, or it gives you quite a bit more low end if you have a lower pitch impeller and you're pushing more water. So that will help with your low end, but uh, depending on the ski, it can lose a little bit of top end. Like a lot of things, you sacrifice one for the other. So one more thing is this little bilge uh, kind of tube here that comes out it is shaved down on the uh, board nozzle so you'll lose vacuum on it uh, I've been told uh, there also can be backwashing if you don't slide something in there like a copper tube or brake line I was told and you just kinda I think I'm just gonna use JB weld and a copper tube of that diameter slide it in there have it sticking out about that far and uh, then you can get your suction back for your bilge and you're not gonna get any back washing so that's another thing to look at if you do get a board nozzle make sure that you stick something in there and uh, you keep that vacuum so that's pretty much a look at my pump 
and what I've done with it. And then over here, I have another one that I'm kind of working on halfway right now. And uh, it looks all right, but as you can still see, there are still the casting marks in there. A little bit, I have not finished this one yet. There are still all those casting marks, so that one's not done yet. <clears throat> but that's pretty much what I've done with my pump and uh, and uh, kind of what I, what I plan on doing. I removed all the silicone on the way on this uh, kind of entrance where the water actually enters the pump. All that's all cleaned up. No more silicone, ready to be re-siliconed along the outside here. Uh, I've been told that you do want to silicone it all the way around. You don't just want to do the sides because that can cause cavitation and you don't want that. So silicone all the way around here. And then when you reassemble it, you want to re-silicone everything again as it was when you disassembled it. So that's that. And then just kind of a quick look because this is kind of part of the pump. I'm also just, I also just have this um, West Coast uh, open intake grate that's a little bit deeper. And I just threw a little coat of paint on it just to, just because, I don't know, just why not. So I threw also a coat on this West Coast ride plate. It's extended and perhaps a little bit deeper. But I ran that for the past season, and it, this combination seems pretty all right. I know that there's more grooves or less grooves depending on kind of your ride style, but it's totally personal preference. So that's kind of what I got going with that, and uh, check back in when I get some more stuff done.